Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Thursday, the 5th of August, and it is time for another instalment of the Daily Leads. Everything concerning Leeds United in and around uh, Four Parch and Ellen Road. We've got loads to get into in today's episode. Uh, Phil Hay did a Q&A over on The Athletic, so he's gave us loads of information to go through. Updates on Mateus Pereira, Lewis O'Brien, Ryan Kent, many, many more. And of course, we'll have a little chat about Ajax as well. Not too much of a chat, because that burnt my head out. <laughs> I did a watch-along for it, no, on a level. Thank you to everyone that joined me for that watch-along for that game. It means the absolute world. You continue to support the channel. It continues to grow, grow and I'm I'm forever grateful. So thank you to each and every one of you for doing that. Before we do get in, as always, smash a like before we before we start the video. And if, su subscribe if you're new as well. And uh, let's get into it, guys. And this is the moment when I take a stand of God. So, guys, we're going to start, first of all, with, of course, the double loss. The double loss yesterday uh, of Leeds United uh, over in Holland against both Ajax side. Uh, we had a Leeds United 11 that included the likes of Phillips, Liam Cooper playing at left-back. He didn't have the luxury of seeing the game. I was uh, at the cinema watching uh, Space Jam 2 with a, with a young one, so I didn't see... Uh, the uh, the lunchtime game, as it were, but Leeds lost three one um, in the early under twenty threes kickoff against Ajax. Uh, a late Max Dean penalty pulling one back for Leeds United. Uh, Somerville was good again, and he was involved a little bit later on. He didn't get a run out, but he was involved with the first team um, after coming on at uh, half time uh, in that game. Uh, look, the Ajax side we were up against are a very very elite side. Uh, they've been playing in in Champions Leagues at a young age group with the likes of Chelsea, City, Liverpool, etc., which are clubs that we're going to be going up against next season in the Premier League 2 Division 1. Um, so it's a real test. It's always going to be a test. But um, it was nice to see, obviously, Calvin getting, he, getting his run out, Liam Cooper, etc., after his injury uh, issues, a few knocks that he's picked up. Um, but the big one we're going to talk about is, of course, the senior side. The senior side, as it were, um, lost 4-0. Uh, the Johan Cruyff Arena to Ajax. Um, I felt like I was putting out fires last night on the watch along. Um, I think people are overreacting and some of you might be watching this saying, no, we're not. And that's fine because football is a game of opinions. Someone said I'm too positive. That's fine as well. But I, I think for me, we'll be OK. You know, it's pre-season. Ajax are already uh, games ahead of us. They have a better squad than us. You know, it was only two seasons ago. This squad was in a Champions League semi-final a couple of minutes from getting into the final, you know. Um, they're a very good side, very, very good side at home. All the fans behind them, a couple of games ahead of us. We've not had that many. We've not had that many. And I'm not for one second saying here pre-season's been a success. It hasn't. It's not been good. It's not been good enough. But we'll be okay. And people are saying, oh, we need to go out and get business done, etc. We will do. We will do. A centre midfielder will come in. We're going to chat about some transfers in just a second. But a centre midfielder will come in. Don't sweat it. They will come in. We maybe get a winger. Fingers crossed because I think we need it. Because I think the ones that are below, Rafinha and Harrison, ain't cutting the mustard. I don't know what Helder Costa does. I don't think Perveda is ready. I think the jury's still out on him for me anyway. Uh, and Somerville, I don't know if he's ready. We haven't seen him tested against elite ballers yet. Uh, the level, you know, he's great in the under 23s. That's class. I do think he's ahead of Costa and Perveda for me, but obviously, the reason Brielz is not turning to him in these games, you know, he needs time, you need to give the kid time, right? Um, but don't just take it from me, all right? Remember, it is just pre season. I tried bang this drum, it's pre season, relax, don't worry about it, but don't just take my advice on it. I've got a few quotes off Twitter from people that know a lot more about the game than me, that are more reputable than me, yeah. We're going to start first of all with Baron Cross. Baron Cross said it's a tough night at the office for Leeds against elite European opposition, but a slight improvement after the break when Dallas and Aileen played their usual roles. Bielsa will get them where they need to be in 10 days' time. This is what I keep saying as well. I tried to convey this message. The side that you see on that pitch, it was missing key personnel, Liam Cooper, Junior Furpo, Calvin Phillips. In terms of their outputs, they'll be a totally different beast away at Old Trafford. We may not win that game. But it will, will be nothing like what we've experienced in pre-season or last night. Uh, my good friend Oscar from All Leeds TV, again, level-headed, said, name me a single pre-season under Bielsa where we have looked good. The difference with this pre-season is we're playing at a higher calibre of opposition, so the results look worse. The preparation for this season has been no different to the last three under Bielsa. Exactly. You know, we, we, we lost to Har Harriger, etc. 
in previous seasons, you know. But it looks worse because we're playing a higher calibre of opposition. Europa League, you know, winners, finalists, Champions League semi-finalists in, in a not-too-distant past, you know. And, and Phil Hay, the oracle, the man himself, he said, joking aside, Leeds under Bielsa in pre-season are never, ever box office. The trick for him will be to light the fuse like he usually does when the season gets going, you know? And that's true. Pre-season would be also notoriously angry. He likes to trial different things, give people minutes. How many clubs would do what we did today in terms of putting out two sides, using a Leeds 11, not even an under-23s, and sticking Calvin in there, etc.? Pre-season is much of a muchness at Leeds United. I'm, I'm not worried about it. So I ask you, don't be worried about it. If, you know, pre-season's not being great, but if we're performing like this when the season starts, then then you have a right to, 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 to be worried. But not before the season starts. Honestly, don't sweat it, man. That's just my thoughts. One thing we do need to obviously have a look at is Jamie Shackleton. Took a bit of a head uh, injury towards the, the end there, so they'll need to do a close assessment of that. Because, um, as I say, the... The impact didn't look minor, so we'll have to we'll have to keep tabs on that because it does look like we're experiencing a few injuries as well. But that's part of preseason as well. Little niggles here and there it is what it is. It is what it is. But let's move on now, right? We're going to stay on the topic of Phil here. Phil here did a Q and A, and right, so everyone was just bombarding him with questions about transfers. I sign up to the Athletic so I can give you as much as I can from this. We're going to start first of all with Louis O'Brien. Okay, we've heard reports, as I say, over the last. You know, week, two weeks, start of July when we were first linked, uh, when we were going after Conor Gallagher at the time. Phil Hayes spoke in his article uh, that we're going to touch on throughout today's show. Uh, he said, look, the link to Huddersfield Town's Lewis O'Brien are true. OK, you've seen that Bielsa has attended their games against Sheffield Wednesday, called us core brands at Huddersfield. They've worked together, so be able to give a good opinion on how well O'Brien would fare at Ellen Road. Um, it's one to keep a close eye on. Uh, it does need some work. It hasn't progressed towards completion so far, says Phil. Uh, Alan Nixon went on to say apparently they want big cash to sell their prize asset. People saying Huddersfield don't rate this kid. Some fans, it's not true. Is their prize asset. They're looking for close to 10 million. Uh, Leeds had previously offered a cash plus player deal, believed to be Robbie Gotts. Um, you know, Corbran knows Robbie Gotts well. He was his captain of the under-23 side during Corbran's last season as coach at Leeds United. Um, but it turns out they want a cash-only deal uh, and they want something closer to Huddersfield's valuation. Now, I have it on good authority, guys. I, had a, I have it on good authority, a little bit of ITK for you that Leeds United have agreed a fee with Huddersfield Town. They have agreed a fee with Huddersfield Town. I believe it was done yesterday. Um, I can't be privy to how much if it does include a player, but I think by the sounds of it, it looks like it is just going to be cash. Um, whether it'll be close to 10, I'm not sure. It seems hefty, but Leeds have that money. We need a midfielder. Luis O'Brien's liked by Bielsa. He wants him in the door. He's seen him numerous times. Uh, and it looks like that one's going to be done. It looks like that one's going to be done. A fee has been agreed. So hold on to your hats. We may get some more information coming in the next couple of hours. But it looks like Leeds United is set to complete the signature, provided, you know, discussions of contracts, you know, um, medicals, etc. All goes down well. But it looks like Leeds have agreed a fee with Lewis O'Brien. Um, we, we have also been linked in the last 48 hours for a double swoop for Rangers pair Ryan Kent and Glenn Kamara. Um, Ryan Kent, as I say, both players had great seasons at Rangers as they won, you know, the Scottish Premier League the first time in 10 years. Looked like they're going to win it already this season. Kent was one of the main attacking forces in that team. Got 11 goals, 13 assists. Plays primarily on the left wing, but can be used inside as well, which I think we need because I think Rodrigo, I'm not too sure. Uh, and Ryan Kent could fill in there. Apparently, though, they want a fee of 20 million. OK, Leeds ain't going to get anywhere near to that. Um, I can't see it. In terms of Glenn Kamara, dynamic centre midfielder, thrives on breaking pressure, swerves, body faints, uh, loves to drive through the centre of the pitch. Great at exposing defensive lines. Um but, you know, his contract runs till the summer of 2023. 
k and apparently it's going to be a fee of likely between 13 to 15 million to 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 get them to sell Glenn Kamara as i say it's the first time i've seen Glenn Kamara linked as i said the centre midfielder it's Louis O'Brien um he seems to be the one he'll want to come to Leeds United 10 million okay they'll bargain but i don't think it's that much is it for Leeds United of course you don't want to have just to pay just because you're a premier league side but i see that one being done uh, sooner the better for me uh, one thing, as I say, we know, as is always the case, and we've always been told, we will need to wait late in the win window for the winger. Okay, And one of the reasons why we might have to wait late in the window for Ryan Kent is because Stephen Gerrard's Rangers side are still in with a chance of making the Champions League group stage. Okay, If they fail to qualify, maybe they'll then be willing to come to the table and have a look at a move for Ryan Kent because they're not going to want to get rid of Ryan Kent if they're playing Champions League football. And nor will they need to, because the cash that that brings, the cash that that brings once you're playing Champions League football is huge for Rangers. Um, so they're not going to want to sell one of their prize assets, are they? You know, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, Phil Hay was asked in the Q&A specifically about Adama Traore. I've said to you many times, it's never going to happen. I see fans excited by it. I don't know why, because I don't rate him. I don't think he's good at all. Um, Phil Hay said, and again, it's great when we get this stuff from Phil Hay from Graham Smith, because you know it's bob on, okay? You know it's bang on. And he said, I saw the talk over the weekend of a 30 million offer for Triore. We know Otto knows him pretty well. But from what I'm hearing, there has been no direct contact between Leeds and Wolves. And as far as I'm convinced, Triore is not a Bielsa player. You know, he can't see it, I can't see it, others can't see it. I, I I just don't rate him and I don't think he, he would fit in at Leeds United, just my opinion. And we don't have that sort of money to be splashing out on a guy that's probably not going to start games, is what it is. Um, he was asked, James Shackleton looked sharp in pre-season. Lewis Blair is clearly very highly rated. Would Gallagher have been a significantly better player than either of them? Um Phil here went on to say, and the reason, you know, someone said to me yesterday, can you go an episode without speaking about Conor Gallagher? But I found it quite interesting, the amount of questions that Phil posed and the amount of Leeds fans that discredited this guy. Oh, he's rubbish. He was at West Brom, but he'd have been perfect for us. Perfect for us. Just like I think Lewis O'Brien will as well. Uh, he went, Shackleton has hit the point where he needs a consistent run of games. He's very much part of the plans even though there are certain clubs, including Bournemouth, who would like to take him on loan. And that's part of the reason why I chose this question, is the fact that clubs are waiting to take Jamie Shackleton on loan. I wasn't aware of this. I know he'd be highly wanted, but I didn't know Bournemouth had actually requested to take him. It's, it's a decision for Jamie Shack, isn't it? What does he do? Does he stay at his boyhood club? Because, um, look, he's looked good at right back. He's looked really, really good at right back, but he's a centre midfielder. Will he want to get game time there? Bielsa sees him as a right back. We've got Cody Drama waiting in the wings. I suppose this season is a real test now for Jamie Shackleton about what the future holds for him because there are clubs that are sniffing around and, uh, and want him. Um, he was then said, look, injuries depending. Who do you think uh, will see pairing centre-back this season? Do you still see Luke Ayling tucking in for when it's three at the back? Uh, Phil went on to say, Ayling usually just took in yes. I think that will continue. Plenty of you asked about Liam Cooper. Um, and we're going to we're gonna speak about Liam Cooper because um, I think he starts the season. He's our captain. He's a great player. I had to put out loads of fires last night on the watch along because still people have a go at Liam Cooper. And uh, Phil went on to say, plenty of you asked about Liam Cooper's whereabouts because he's yet to play in pre-season. He's had a couple of knocks, we're told, but the likelihood is that he'll be ready for the start of the season. Well, we know he played at left-back in that Leeds eleven. Um, he said, I'm not sure I see a, a Bielsa deviating from the Diego Lorente Cooper partnership in a back four, even though Pascal Strout routinely impresses there. Leeds aren't short of options when everyone is fit. I don't think it's a coincidence that the defensive record improved last season once Lorente settled in. We all know that Lorente starts, he's he great. You know, there were certain sections of the fan base questioned his signature, didn't rate him. Well, how wrong they were. But they admitted they were wrong, you know. We can all admit we were wrong at times. Um, he says, it was unfortunate in, uh, to see him pull a muscle against Betis on Saturday, uh, talking about Lorente. Um, Strout, by all accounts, suffered only minor bruising in that friendly, which we know because he played last night. But I just wanted to delve into that question. is because I'm with Phil in this regard that I still see Diego Lorente and Cooper starting at centre-back. And I think a lot of people need to get used to that idea because it will happen. 
Cooper is the captain. He's well regarded by Bielsa. He knows he can trust him. And I believe, barring he, he comes through fitness tests and plays against Villarreal, he will start. And people need to get that into their mindset. People were telling me last night on the stream he still isn't good enough. I think it's BS. I think it's BS. And get used to the idea that he will be starting birth when he is fit. Okay, alongside Diego Lorente. Pascal Strauch, the future. Is he ready now? Yes, but he's the future, man. He's the future. Uh, Virgil van Strauch, as we coined him over on All Leeds TV. Um, he was then asked about Marco Sensio rumours. Obviously, that was brought up first time a couple of days ago when I had Gary on, actually, on Monday's show. It was one that excited me. I'm thinking, really, Marco Asensio? Uh, and he went, look, the door to a new winger has been left open this summer. But Asensio, I'd be very surprised. The links to Dan James and Noah Lang are far more realistic. Okay, so Noah Lang, Dan James. I know a lot of people don't like the Dan James link, but I think Bielsa would turn him, turn him into an absolute baller. Um, he says, assuming Leeds take the plunge and buy another wide player, um, which I hope we do. I think we need it because I think those that are waiting in the wings are not good enough. God forbid if we were to get an injury to a Rafinha or a Harrison, I think those that are ready to step in are just not quite there for me. Um, he did also say as well, don't discount Ryan Kent at Rangers. That interest goes back a long way. We touched on Ryan Kent earlier, links that were still interested in him. They want 20 million. Maybe that'll change if Rangers don't get into the Champions League. Look, it's clear. Bielsa loves Dan James. Bielsa loves Ryan Kent. The club love Noah Lang. It's going to be one of them three. We know Club Bruges have brought in uh, a, a new winger, Calado, on loan from Barcelona. We know Manchester United have brought in Jaden Sancho. Surely Dan James will leave at some point. Yeah, Dan, G Jan Dan James will leave Manchester United at some point. Uh, and of course, you know, Ryan Kent, to get in the Champions League, we'll have to wait and see. Now, if indeed we do bring in a Ryan Kent, a Dan James, a Noah Lang in that wing position, yeah, um, for me, it leaves the wingers that are currently at the club um, scratching their heads a little bit. Like, what does a Helder Costa do? Well, Phil here was asked that question. He says, is there any news on Helder Costa potentially leaving the club? As pre every game comes, Helder Costa seems to get worse. I hate to say it, but he does. And the fans are like, yo, this kid, it's just not happening. And Phil went on to say, I mentioned in a previous article that Valencia hold an interest in uh, Costa. His future will only come up for discussion if Leeds signs somebody else in that position. But if another winger does come in, I'm not entirely sure where Costa fits. I'm not entirely sure where he fits right now, if I'm being totally honest. And we don't have an extra winger, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, he went on to be asked about Bamford's contract, about Calvin Phillips, uh, and maybe even Ilian Melier he says, look, the plan is to tie Bamford to new terms. He and the club have been talking about that. Phillips has plenty of time left on in his existing contract. Kev Sharp, his agent, said before it's fine. Um, but like Phil said, his stock is rising dramatically. So that will come onto the agenda soon enough. Of course, you've got to protect your prize assets. You've got to. Uh, and he said nothing's been said about a new deal for Ilya Melia, but I'm sure that will happen in the future as well. Um, he was also asked uh, about... Bielsa's future, um, but then was asked, what about Orta? We hear about Bielsa all the time. What about Orta? Is he likely to stick around for a while yet, or has he any plans to return to Spain? Uh, Phil went on to say, Orta is very highly rated in the game. Roma were keen on him previously, but he's always said that he'll stay for at least as long as it takes to get leads into Europe. Okay, um, It's easy for us fans to underestimate the amount of work this guy does day to day. Okay. The, and also, like Phil went on to say about the challenge of maintaining a strong relationship with Bielsa. We all love him, but it can't be easy to work with, you know. Um, and them two working together, it's just been seamless. But it must take a lot of work on, on Orta's part. We need to remember that. Uh, that's loads of leads chat for you there. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed bringing you all that news. Fingers crossed that Louis O'Brien one gets done, folks. Gets done. Looks like a bid has been accepted. And just to finish as well, I know on last night's live stream, a lot of people asking for a Pablo replacement, a centre attacking midfielder. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. And one that's definitely not going to happen is Mateus Pereira. We spoke the other day that Leeds had never been in contact. That was the breaking news. Remember in his statement, he spoke about having a life-changing offer at the age of 25. I put two and two together and was like, well, surely that's coming from that Saudi club. And it turns out it is. Fabrizio Romano said, Ali Halil, where Alioski has turned up, are in advance talks to sign Mateus Pereira from West Brom. 
Final details to be fixed between Ali Alil and West Brom on a final fee. Personal terms now agreed. It's up to the two clubs. Um, Leeds are not interested. Um, and it says Mateus is pushing to complete the deal with Ali Halil. And that's come from Fabrizio Romano, which to Phil here to Leeds is like him to the world. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He is literally the oracle. But thank you, as always, for watching the Just Your Football Show. I'm really grateful for all your support. Make sure you join us tonight on Before the Whistle Blows at 8 o'clock, uh, where we give some more predictions for the season ahead. And also, just have a great chat and laugh in the comments. You guys enjoy it. We enjoy it. So thank you, as always, for, for tuning in. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out now. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.